closure of Castle Grange, the dementia-specific care home that my mum is a resident of. Um, we've got over 3,000 signatures, so we would like it to be considered at the next um, full council meeting um, and debated in that forum. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we now go on to item five. Uh, we have six questions today from members of the public. I believe the officers may have spoken to you. There is obviously the six questions that are divided up amongst you. If you'd like to ask your questions and supplementaries, and then Councillor Ramsey will answer it all in one go. I am aware that one of the, is it Sarah? Sarah, you um, have actually submitted two questions with no supplementary. So if you want to wait until after that, and then come back to Jackie, you're more than welcome to. Okay, so, so the first person is Sarah. Am I on? <laughs> Love Blair, just give me one second, please. Just getting it up. Um, so, if, uh, question one. In view of the obvious flaws in the consultation, is the Cabinet going to abandon the flawed consultation, take into account all of the objections, and recommence a fresh consultation with more than just one option for closure? Do you want the second one? Yep. Um, with the ina inaccuracies that have been presented in relation to finances, is the Cabinet sure that, there, uh, that any small potential service, uh, saving sorry, is worth the risk to life a forced relocation would equate to for the most vulnerable people? Thank you for that, Sarah. And, Thank you. Uh, can I introduce Sarah Newton? Thank During the consultation process for CAL, there was widespread social media coverage to access the consultation through Kirklees Council Facebook page. There has been no such visibility for the care home consultation. Can you explain why? Follow-up to that would be dementia is on the increase with approximately 900,000 people in the United Kingdom alone. In my family, both my dad and brother have dementia. Therefore, given how dementia is on the rise, the consultation is relevant to more than just residents' families and the ability to access good quality specialist dementia care is of concern to the wider public. Therefore, the fact the consultation has been hidden away on the Council's website, away from other consultations being intentional to restrict the access to the number of people that will access it. The current strategy to keep people at home discriminate, discriminates against those with dementia who are unable to stay at home living due to safeguarding for themselves and their carers. This results in increased domestic violence and both verbal and physical abuse to carers and their families. In my case, my 12-year-old son and five-year-old daughter and increased mental health issues for carers. How is the council going to address the discrimination in the current strategy? If the council continues to pursue the strategy to keep dementia residents at home when safeguarding is an issue, are you prepared to hold yourself accountable when the increased impacts of that decision on our loved ones suffering from dementia and their carers, partners and children? So we have Helen, Helen Pleskett. On the Kirklees website, information for families, care home bed capacity and admissions, it states that should Cabinet decide to move to closure of Claremont House and Castle Grange, we will work with families, social workers, etc. The teams across each care home and with independent sector providers through the Kirklees Care Association to identify the service which best matches and meets needs of residents. End quote. The council has stated in response to questions about public providers that one consideration of theirs is the opportunity to utilise the independent care sector. Of an original list of 57, now admittedly amended and reduced to possibly six, the council have shared their list of independent providers they feel can achieve this. However, Following direct discussions from some of our families with these six identified providers, we have been informed that only one of these providers care for advanced dementia, including additional care needs and behavioural issues. 
One home stated helping residents with feeding and dealing with those who are doubly incontinent is too time consuming. One home said doors are locked so residents can't mix with other residents as they don't always get on. The level of skilled support that mitigates the need to reduce these social opportunities and provide for these care needs is the bread and butter at Claremont. My husband is doubly incontinent, has feeding needs, and because of previous rugby injuries, needs a daily exercise regime. Can you please look again at the list of alternatives we were supposed to consider, and as part of the consultation report, and consideration of alternative providers based on the current levels of skill and care provided by Claremont and Castle Grange, not just the aesthetics of a building. Follow-up question to that. My husband, who is mobile, has the right to move freely from room to room, corridor to corridor, lounge to lounge. A doll's assessment is in place to keep him safe. This needs to be about his safety and not be used to justify locking him up. He is very passive and walks away from any perceived aggression or threat. He is currently helped in this by specialist staff when there is any threat that he doesn't understand. How will you reassure me that a deprivation of liberty safeguard is in place to enable him to keep these rights of movement in a safe environment enabled by specialist staff with relevant and up-to-date training and monitoring? Okay, question two. The Council have admitted that the initial impact assessment did not include longer term health considerations and that they had not reached out to experts or carried out the appropriate research until a request from families at the first consultation meetings. This has possibly been rectified by more recent contacts with Huddersfield and Stirling University. So far, the signposting on the consultation links takes us to more generic data from government around morbidity, future predictions around dementia care numbers, and other national statistical data, but does not provide any additional information about moves for residents from their home with the loss of known carers, friends, familiar settings and routines, other than to state high negative impact to our residents. Can you provide the research in its entirety that relates to these individual care homes in conjunction with the greater context of the choices we are being offered and ensure this data will be shared and used as part of the final decision-making process? And a follow-up to that. A number of my friends in Claremont attend hospital for routine medical procedures. We all know how hard this is. Many relatives, like myself, dread the phone call that informs us our loved ones need a procedure that can't be carried out at Claremont. It is widely acknowledged that when care needs are not met, there is a, highly, a higher likelihood of accidental occurrences which will result in higher hospital admissions for individuals, for these individuals especially with higher needs. Hospital wards cannot meet the needs of dementia. They are not equipped or designed for this. With the updated information of 57 changing to six, can the short-term and longer-term health impacts also include consideration of the wider health services and how they will be impacted when these private providers and families returning their loved ones to their homes are unable to meet need? Thank you. Thank you all for them questions. And I'll bring in Councillor Randall. <coughs> Thank you. I Apologies, I'm not going to look at you because I've, I've got something to read. Um, so, uh, okay. Um, before I just start on that, I just wanted to, to make the point that many of our neighbouring councillors no longer deliver long-term care directly, including councils such as Bradford, Barnsley, Doncaster and Calderdale. And a number of councils where direct provision remains are still considering their long-term position and their role in care. So we're not, um, we're not unusual. Sarah, for, for your first question, um, this isn't a flawed consultation. The council entered into a voluntary consultation process and there is no legal requirement to consult on alternative options in this context. The council is consulting on proposals to close the two care homes and has set out in the detailed information shared with families as well as online and on the consultation webpage the combination of factors which mean it is not viable for the Council to continue operating Castle Grange and Claremont House as council-run residential facilities. 
In the spirit of transparency and openness, the council has responded promptly to requests for additional information from consultees. The council has provided sufficient information and sufficient reasons to justify the council's proposals uh, upon, the, um, upon which the council is consulting. The council will give serious, consulta uh, serious consideration to consultation responses before any final decision on the future of these care homes is taken. Consultation responses will also form part of the Cabinet report. To your supplementary... Oh, you didn't ask one, did you? Sorry. I'll, I'll come on to your next question, sorry. Um, the Cabinet report, dated the 26th of September, section 2.9 to 2.11, highlighted the cost variations based on a range of occupancy scenarios. This information has been explained in detail in the consultation meetings with families. No inaccuracies were presented in these discussions. Family members were talked through the financial models at the finance focus consultation meeting. There was feedback from families that they found the meeting helpful and minutes are available on request. The Council does not view a saving of over a million pounds every year to be a small potential saving at a time when there are well-documented pressures on adult social care services across the country which risk other people not being able to receive the services that they need. That's Sarah. Um, Sarah, I'll come on to your questions. The changes proposed for Cal directly affected thousands of people who use the leisure facilities, whereas the changes for the care homes directly affect 46 residents, their families and friends and the staff. The Council therefore has taken um, a more direct face-to-face -face consultation approach with families and staff to ensure that those directly affected could engage fully. That said, the consultation has been promoted on social media and has been shared on Facebook on the 21st of November, reaching 1,885 people. We're also aware that some family members have been commenting on council Facebook posts that are not related to the, home, uh, to the care home consultation. The comments are asking people to sign the petition to stop the care homes closing. The Council Press Office has responded to many press queries from local and regional media outlets covering press and TV, including BBC Look North and ITV Calendar, and has facilitated interviews where appropriate. Council officers have also uh, facilitated space for media interviews at the care homes for family members. This consultation has constantly remained in the headlines, Hence, we're confident that people are aware of the consultation. To your supplementary, the Council is fully aware of the increase in the number of people who have and who are likely to get dementia. This is a factor in why we are consulting on reprofiling of our services, so we can provide the support to people earlier. In the event that the two care homes were to cease being operated by the Council, a wide range of other residential care provision will remain available to people living with dementia in Kirtleys. The consultation has not been hidden away, as I described earlier. Sarah, to your second question. It's well documented that many people with dementia prefer to continue living in their own homes. Previous studies undertaken by the Alzheimer's Society highlight that almost 85% of people would prefer to stay in their own home if they received the diagnosis of dementia. People living at home with dementia can be supported to remain independent at home with the help of telecare, assisted technology, home adaptations and home-based care and support interventions. We are focusing on this as part of our strategies to support people with dementia to live life to the full which is a, um, a set out in our Kirtley's Dementia Guide. And you can find that on the Council website. The Council does recognise the impact of being a carer for somebody living with dementia. Hence the investment in a high quality um, dementia day service that provides a break 
or will provide a break for family carers. Residential care will be the right solution for some people living with dementia at a point in their life but it's after people have spent a long period of time living with dementia in their own homes. The council understands the very difficult decisions that family members need to make when it has um, become too difficult to support somebody in their own home, despite that individual wanting to remain there. And to your supplementary. Balancing the rights and interests of an individual living with dementia with the rights and interests of others, particularly family members, is difficult and is at the heart of um, much of the work of adult social care, particularly when an individual lacks capacity. This means that every circumstance is unique, but it would not be right to have a policy that said that everybody living with dementia needed to move into a residential care home, even if they didn't want to. Helen, in response to your um, first question. The individual needs of each resident will be considered as part of a social work reassessment and in accordance with the Care Act 2014, the Equality Act 2010 and the Health and Social Care Act 2008, Regulated Activities Regs 2014. Information relating to alternative providers has been shared with families and it is accessible through the private sector care homes section on the consultation page which is on the website, council website. To your supplementary, it will be considered on an individual case by case basis through the social work reassessment, best interest assessment and mental capacity assessments. Helen. The Council echoes the value of the integrated impact assessment as an iterative and evidence-based process which contributes to assessing and mitigating the impact of Council proposals. The initial version of the integrated impact assessment did not include references to long-term impact of relocating as the Council was awaiting feedback and further analysis from dementia leads experts a placeholder on this respect was included in the published integrated, integra integrated you know what I mean, IIA, um, and families were informed of this during the initial consultation meeting. The latest version of the IIA now does include references to both the short-term and the long-term impacts on residents. Should the council choose to close to progress with a closure programme of care homes? Council officers would be happy to share the evidence base used to help inform the assessments and mitigations to, uh, of the impact. The, the integrated impact assessment is, as you know, available on the council website. To your supplementary, Claremont House is a residential care home and not a nursing home or a hospital, and so there will inevitably be instances where a resident needs to move from Claremont House in order to receive medical treatment, either on a planned or an unplanned basis. There's no difference to other residential care homes. There are 57 care homes across Kirtleys that predominantly support adults over the age of 65. Of these 57, there are 44 care homes in Kirtleys that registered with the Care Commission and identified dementia as a service specialism or a service category. Depending on the needs of a specific individual, a number of these dementia residential homes could potentially meet the needs of individuals or groups of residents. However, this can only be determined after the social work assessment and individual discussions with service uh, user families. As has previously been set out to families, a very specific question was asked of the council to which the answer was six homes. This was not the number of homes that could potentially accommodate existing residents of either Claremont House or Castle Grange. A larger number home of homes could potentially do this depending on individual need. Thank you. Sorry, you did have a uh, supplementary because you didn't have it on your two questions. Okay. 
work the system. <laughs> um, recent concerns have been raised regarding increased admissions from private sector care facilities into hospitals and subsequent refusal to readmit into private sector due to not being able to meet the needs of the dementia resident. If these are valid concerns uh, on the pressure to the NHS, can you explain how closing two specialist dementia care homes helps ease the pressure on the NHS? Thank you. Um, I'm not aware that there is any evidence that um, at, between the difference between um, council uh, residential homes and private sector residential homes. I would need to check that with officers to see and not, whether or not that is actually the case. W would I be able to get a written response once you've d done that? <coughs> Yeah, I'm happy to respond to you. Thank you. Would you like a second supplementary to your second question? Okay. In your, in your responses, you've highlighted other local authorities um, that are, that have not uh, that are not offering uh, residential care, but there's also examples of of other authorities. Um, offering increased dementia services. So why, so why only reference councils that are in line with your position and not those that are, are doing more? Thank you. I'm just trying to put it in context. I was trying to put it in context for you that we're not the only council that is having very difficult decisions to make around um, how we um, look at reprofiling our services. Um, thank you. Just a comment there is that you, you, you can be the forward thinking council in, in terms of dementia care and, and dementia services throughout the journey of dementia and that would be something to be very proud of to maintain those services rather than, than get rid of. Thank you. Am I allowed to comment on something please? This I feel it isn't on my um, questions, it's on the responses to Sarah's next to me. I felt like some of the answers demonised us as relatives and I felt really offended by that. Um, I cared for my husband for nearly five years. I nearly had a mental breakdown. Um, he, I was told by carers that were coming in that um, they couldn't manage him on their own because he needed two people. I did it on my own. He had three days at Knowles Park and they were amazing but they got to the point where they couldn't do that anymore. And I would go to work for three days, those three days. And then I would come home and I would take over. And I, that would be every night and every other day of the week. And I ended up with sleep deprivation and it was unsafe for me and for him. Please don't demonize carers that put their families and loved ones into residential care. The answers to those questions absolutely demonized us. And I, that was so upsetting for me to hear. I'm sorry that you felt that way, and I don't think that was Councillor. I think that in, no, in I don't tension. believe it was. It felt it felt yeah. very much like it was coming from a legal yeah. perspective, right. and I'm aware that you've been supported okay. by legal. And I do Thank believe, you. I do believe uh, Councillor Ramsey will take up a side conversation, but it was never that intention to me. Thank you. Like but you need to be very careful. It's very personal. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. So we're now moving on.